Pregame.com. Welcome back to Pregame.tv. I'm Marco D'Angelo with Steven Nover. It's the day after the NBA All-Star Game. Great defensive game last night in the NBA <laughs> All-Star Game, if you missed it. <laughs> We're, uh, it was great defense the last 30 seconds. <laughs> Come on. Uh, situation it's here. It's the only time they played defense all night. Right. It, it came down to the final possession, yeah. so they decided to play defense. Um, we're going to pre we're going to do like a recap of the first half of the season and then uh preview of the second half maybe some teams some sleeper teams uh teams flying under the radar some overrated teams you know Stephen this has been a season of streaks for sure we've got some NBA teams that are just you know going off on sick runs uh we did a video uh, earlier today the San Antonio Spurs you know what they did and, and do it on the you know on the road that nine game road trip um the, well let's start with the Spurs um they're playing well they're always a good team but every year we hear the same thing father times knocking on San Antonio's door mm -hmm. And yet, every year, the San Antonio Spurs are there at playoff time. The one thing that's different this year, and I don't know maybe if Popovich pushed the buttons earlier this year because it's a condensed season, but normally the Spurs start out really slow, and you don't see them start hitting stride till you know, late February, you know, March, and then they make that surge you know, into the playoffs. You know, he gets them ready for playoff time. They're playing well early this year. Uh, you know, th this team's been playing well. They played well last year. They, you know, they I think were they the top seed last year? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then uh, you know lost to Memphis. But uh, do you see this team going the distance in the the West? Yeah, yeah, I could see it. Um, I know Oklahoma City's going to be a popular pick with a lot of people, and you know. Uh, I think they could be ready to take that next step. Oklahoma City, they have the best record of the West right now, but uh, San Antonio is going to be, be dangerous. And what I like them as opposed to Oklahoma City, and this is projecting in the playoffs, is they had a huge wake-up call losing to Memphis you know, mm -hmm. last year in, in the playoffs. And I think that's part of your point. Maybe Popovich, he really wanted to crack the whip early. Mm -hmm. And um, I like Popovich better than any coach in the league. And... Uh, I think this is really, there. there is the window closing in. This isn't a Boston situation where I think the Celtics are really a dead team. Mm -hmm. San Antonio is very much alive. They showed they can win on the road uh, night after night on, this, on their long road trip. And, and they're doing it without Ginobili right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. When he gets back, you know, they're just going to be that much, you know, stronger yeah. for the playoffs. I can't disagree with the San Antonio Spurs and with, you know, mm -hmm. the, the experience factor, you know, Parker and Duncan, you know, great one-two punch. There. Parker, unbelievable season. You know, you know, uh, you know maybe divorce served him well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding, wifey. <laughs> but uh, situation, uh, I can't disagree with Spurs, but I think last year Oklahoma yeah. City, they were just a year too soon. Yeah. They, yeah. It's just, it's almost like you have to, it's a rite of passage yes. in the NBA. You you just don't come in in that yep. first year, you know, yep. have a good team and run it. Yep. You've got to learn how to win at the next level. And yep. you've got the regular season, then you've got the playoffs. And even the playoffs, you have the NBA conference finals. You know, so there's like three parts there. And I think Oklahoma City took a huge step last year in the learning process, the experience factor. You know, Kevin Durant is just, he's, he's playing lights out. And, and I think no matter what team they go up against, it's going to pose matchup problems for teams. And um, I, I just think the, the learning experience last year and in a seven-game series, um, maybe Father Time, we'll, we'll see that in a grueling seven seven game series against, you know, San Antonio. Uh, if that materializes, we saw the youth kind of, you know, take it to them last year with Memphis in, in the the series that took San Antonio out. But I like Oklahoma, you know, City in the West. And I know that's the in vogue uh, pick, but you look at the other contenders. Where are they? The Lakers are not a good team right now. They, 
they've they're good, but they're not a great team. Let me rephrase that. I think the Lakers are a team that is going to be a better second half point spread team than they were in the first half. And the reason for that is this is a team that lost their coach, had a you know Mike Brown come in, totally different system they had to learn. You didn't have the normal uh, preseason time that you would have you know, to learn a new coach's system and get a, you know, acclimated to the new offense and everything. I think this was a team that had to hit the ground running and they're just now starting to get comfortable with the new system. But then you got the Paul Gasol stuff that's been floating around. Um, you know, that's been a distraction to the team too. As we near that trading deadline, if it's going to happen, like Kobe said, let's let's you know let's get it done so we can move on. But you know the closer we get, and nothing happens. He's probably going to end up staying there, and then you know then he can't feel slighted anymore. He's there for the rest of the season. They can put it together. I think the Lakers are not done. I think we're going to still hear uh, they're going to make a lot of noise down the stretch. What do you think? Well, Marco, I I agree with your premise that you have to pay dues in the NBA. You just don't jump three steps. It's a gradual process. It's not like baseball, where some team out of nowhere can win a World Series, get a couple hot pitchers, like the Giants, mm -hmm. you know, for instance. Uh, they didn't really pay dues. They just won a World Series. It's mm -hmm. happened. The Marlins, the Diamondbacks. Oh, the Marlins know. bought theirs. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> but as far as Oklahoma City, yes, that, that is a good point. And um, I just don't know if they have the, the versatility, though, to, to, to win a championship, because you get in the playoffs. It's a totally different animal. You know, you have to really played a half-court defense. Uh, you have to really have the experience coaching. You've got to have superstars step up. I agree, Kevin Durant's a superstar. Do I trust Russell Westbrook, though? Not necessarily, although he's, he's playing, an all-star. He's playing well this year, but he can, you know, he's had his problems in the past. Yeah, yeah, and you, you mentioned the Lakers as, as kind of being a wild card. I mean, this is a team, you know, we're taping this uh, the day after the all-star game. What about in a week, all of a sudden they land Dwight Howard? I mean, that could really change things, and uh, I think San Antonio could be dangerous. You know, the Clippers, you know, they have a nice collection of talent. I just think it's, it's pretty much wide open in the West. I think in the East, the, the two best teams in all of basketball reside in the East, right. the Heat and the Bulls, and then after that, it's all those Western teams. Go back to the Clippers for a second. Mm -hmm. I think the Clippers fit into the mold of last year's Oklahoma City. They're the team that's going to make a huge jump this year, yeah. but I don't think they can make that third-level jump. They're going to make the playoffs, obviously. Right now they're in first place in their division. Um, I think one thing that will give the Clippers a little bit of advantage is they're going to be in a dogfight, I feel, with the Lakers right, right to the end of the season. So that will help toughen them up, I mm -hmm. think, with, you know, some big game experience, battling the Lakers, and, you know, they've been the little, I mean, they've been the joke of L.A. for how many years, and now, you know, it's, you know, fashionable to go to a Clippers game, you know, rather than, mm -hmm. you know, a Laker game, and, uh, you know, Blake Griffin and, you know, Chris Paul, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, media attention with this team coming into the season once they landed Chris Paul. Can you imagine if Chris Paul would have landed on the other side of the mm -hmm. Staples Center, you know, in the Lakers like the trade was? But I think this team will make noise, but I think mm -hmm. like Oklahoma City last year, it might be one round of the playoffs and then out. Uh, I don't think they make it all the way to the NBA uh, conference finals like Oklahoma City did, but it's it's a learning process for the Clippers because they you can't go from a laughing stock for so many years it to, to all of a sudden be. Well, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but if there's one sport that I a little sketchy about, it's the NBA. Now, do they want small market Oklahoma City in the finals? <laughs> you know, I remember it with Tim Donahue with his revelations and. We know the kind of person he was, but actually I put some stock in these revelations. The last small market team that really had a shot to win a championship was the Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. And the NBA took that away from them with a biased referee. Mm -hmm. Not saying that'll be the case here or anything, but if there are any conspiracy theorists, that might be a point for them. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a small market city, but... Kevin Durant is, is is becoming such a, a a big name, and you know you've got some marquee status to watch him. I, I he's think he's a great player, Marco, but he doesn't get the <clears throat> attention and publicity as the big market guys like LeBron and right. uh, you know all these other guys. I mean, he, you hardly ever see this guy. 
he's a scoring machine, but he just, you know, he doesn't have that cachet like these other superstars. Oh, it, it's a it's a good point. Uh, I can't disagree. Switching over to the East, uh, to me, yeah, I agree with you. The two best teams are Chicago and Miami, and you know, a blind man can see that. Yeah. Um, team that's been a surprise so far this year, uh, Philadelphia. Um, you know, they were a team that came on at the end of last season. They actually played Miami tough in the uh, playoff series against Miami. Um, you know, they lost to them, but they played all of the games competitively. I think there was one, you know, one blowout in there. They started the season out good. Now they've cooled off a little bit uh, recently, but this is a team, do you see them carrying, how far do you see them carrying their early good start? They're improved. I love their coach, Doug Collins. I like him a lot. They, they uh, protect the ball well. They play good defense. And I thought maybe in the beginning they had the potential to actually make a huge jump and become an elite team. They beat up a lot of cupcakes at home, right. put up impressive records. But last nine games, they've kind of maybe found their, their water, their, their high water mark, because they've come way down. They're uh, two and seven straight up in their last nine games, one and eight against the spread. And you look at their um, home games. Now, this is since February 3rd, so this is pretty current. Now, they've beaten bad teams at home. The question always has been with the 76ers, can they beat quality teams right. at home? Now, again, since February 3rd, a 20-point loss to Miami at home, 10-point loss to the Spurs at home, a 1-point loss to the Clippers at home, which aren't a great road team, yeah. and a 7-point home loss just recently to Dallas. What does that tell you about the 76ers? Yeah. They went from contender to pretender. <laughs> is, is yeah, what they're maybe had. a year or two away. Yeah. yeah um, and you've got to look at, you know, right now, uh, you know, they weren't uh, a couple weeks ago, but we can't do a video without talking about, you know, Jeremy Lin and Lin Sanity in New York. I wish we could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, a, it is a great story. And, you know, here's a team, you know, the Knicks were dead in the water. Yeah. I mean, they, they were not yeah. playing well. Carmelo was hurt. Mm -hmm. Stoudemire was out. And now, coming out of the All-Star break, this team's one game under 500. they They're only three and a half behind Philadelphia. I, you know, if Carmelo buys into the offense and works as a team with Stoudemire and Jeremy Lin, this team can be very dangerous offensively. You know, Jeremy Lin's not a superstar. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, he, it's a great story what he's done. But he is a very capable point guard that's playing unbelievable right now. And he can get the ball to these guys. And if they work as a unit and not everybody wanting to take all the shots, this team's going to be dangerous. They don't play great defense. That's always been a, you know, a knock on the Knicks. And Jeremy Lin... Um, you know, is not a great defensive point guard. You know, he's, he's average, you know, mm -hmm. there. But the team, there is a chemistry. Let's say there was a chemistry before Carmelo came back. They've only played three games since Carmelo came back, and I think whether well, they won in two since Carmelo came back. So we got to see how they move forward. If they learn how to coexist, this team has a license to get very good in the second half of the season. Um, you know, this team can get that chemistry in jail. Look to last year, the Miami Heat. It took two months before that team found their stride with LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. You just don't throw people into the, into the mix and it's instant, you know. It's got to simmer. They got to, you know, learn and gel, play together. The Knicks, I think, can only get better. But is there going to be value on the Knicks? Not as long as this... Linsanity stuff's going on. The value actually is going against the Knicks right now because they are totally over adjusting the you know the lines on this team uh, because of it. But I think they are going to be a hard out in the playoffs, and I do think the Knicks make the playoffs. Well, I think they can make the playoffs, but I don't see them really making noise in the playoffs, Marco. Um, Carmelo Anthony, a better fantasy player than a real player. I mean, you don't win with him. He's been a morale killer. He, he, they did better without him. Uh, how he affects Lynn remains to be seen. Um, 
Lynn has come in there and, and, and done the job better than any of the Nick point guards, which is an understatement. He's put up some great numbers. However, what's, what's kind of overlooked with him and all this Lynn sanity is this guy commits a lot of turnovers, mm -hmm. a lot of turnovers. And I realize he's still getting in sync with, with, with his guys. And, but whoever is the point guard for the Knicks is going to put up good individual stats. That's his D'Antoni's style. Mm -hmm. You're going to put up good numbers in that. Now, he's put up really phenomenal numbers, but... I don't see really that continuing. I mean, he's not some super talent. He's in a good situation. He's making the most of it to his credit. But um, Anthony, Stoudemire, great talents, but are they winning players? I'd say no. Yeah. Well, the, uh, we'll see how they go. The Celtics, I think we both agree, this is a team that's dead in the water. Well, this is scary, Marco. These guys are under 500, and as the season wears on and their age starts showing up, it's, it's going to get worse. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't see anything out of Boston. Um, the, only, the last team that we'll talk about, and we'll wrap this up, the Orlando Magic, this is the team that's, you know, the enigma. They, they've played horrible at times this year. I mean, they've yeah. had some pitiful offensive performances. And what's got to be decided here is we near that trading deadline. Do they move Dwight Howard and basically give up on this season, which, you know, they're five and a half behind Miami, but they're definitely a playoff team. I mean, they're five and a half by Miami, behind Miami, but they got the third best record in the, in mm -hmm. the East. Or do you keep Dwight Howard and go out and, and be a buyer at the, at the trade deadline and try to add a piece to this team because there is talent there. This team's just, you know, they're either they're one player away from being good and they're also one player away, if it happens to be Dwight Howard getting traded, to this team being bad. Well, if I'm the Orlando Magic, I'm a seller. Uh, they're still uh, stigmatized by when they lost Shaq and got nothing for him. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how they can allow history to repeat itself and give let Dwight Howard walk and not get anything for him. Mm -hmm. Now let's say flip it around, say, okay, let's be a buyer, let's get another piece and make a run at this. Who are they going to add that's going to allow them to become good enough to overtake Chicago and Miami? Yeah. Nobody. They cannot beat either of those teams. They may be the third best team in the East. But that's there's fine. A big gap. There's a big Unfortunately, gap. they're yeah. not. They got Chicago and Miami. Yeah. Maybe if they're in the West, it might be worth it to do that. So no. If they cannot convince Howard to stay there, then you know you better get something for him and start getting the building blocks going. Okay, well, there you have it. Your projections for the NBA Finals? Well, uh, right now, the day after the All-Star break, I would call it Miami uh, to beat San Antonio in the Finals. Well, it definitely looks like Miami's on, on a mission. Um, How about you, what would you say? You know... I want to see Miami and Chicago in a, a rematch of the conference finals. I, I think. I think you, you know you get that. That's Chicago, uh, I think, with the year's experience, is going to be better for it. But on the flip side, I think an added year of the big three playing together, yeah. they are playing at a great level right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go with um, Chicago for the upset. I'm going to take Chicago in the finals. And I agree with you. Uh, I see an NBA Finals this year of the Spurs and or the NBA Conference uh, Finals in the West, Spurs and Thunder. And I just think in a seven-game series that uh, Oklahoma City is going to find a way to beat them with uh, the youth. The youth. Yeah. And uh, last year being the learning experience. So right now I'll go with Chicago and the Thunder in the Finals. See. We'll see in a couple months if either of us were right. We'll look back at the tapes. There you have it. That's our recap of the first half and preview of the second half of the NBA season. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can uh, come in ask us any other questions about some teams maybe we didn't talk about. Go to pregamevideos.com. We'll carry on the conversation. For Steven Nover, I'm Marco D'Angelo. Stay tuned for more videos from pregame.tv all week long. We'll talk to you soon.